Welcome back, everyone. It's Strafe here with another episode of Cafe Enchante, starting chapter one of Kaoru Rindo, or Mr. Rindo. He is the only human candidate out of all the all the choices that we have here. Um, so I think I might have mentioned this last time, but looking through his route, um, his route is rife with bad endings. <laughs> So, if you're, like, playing it blind, uh, definitely make a lot of saves. But we're, we're using a little a guide, so, like, we don't have to worry too much about that. But yeah. Kind of, kind of weird. I wonder, wonder how many ways, like, this story is gonna, like, try to make us die. <laughs> After the last route, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised that... Like, the other routes only had, like, one bad ending, really, where it just kind of ends ends things off for you. But anyway, let's start. It's chapter one, so it should go easy on us. And we have some nice rainy rainy ambience, kind of fitting for the weather that we've been having. My street is literally flooded. flooded. <laughs> Alright, anyway. Coffee drips slowly from the carafe. It was a seemingly ordinary event on a rainy day. Swan and I are sharing downtime together. So yeah, this is this is uh, I think this is Mr. Rindo hanging out with Grandpa back in the day. Rindo, you look bored again. I'm always like this. The familiar small talk with Mr. Swan used to say that to me when no one else was around. I'm convinced he said that to me because he didn't see me as a customer at Enchante. It's not that I wasn't a customer. It's just that I can't get my work off my mind, no matter what I do. It's been roughly five years since I joined the regulars here. I only frequent in Enchante because the higher-ups at the GPM gave me orders to. That would explain why I was never seen as a customer most of the time. And to make matters worse, I've long forgotten the vigor I once had as a member of the GPM. With nothing left in life to inspire me, all I did was blindly work whatever case was given to me on a day-by-day -day basis. Guess I can't argue with this guy in front of me telling me I look bored. I wish I could fix that face of yours while I'm still around. With that said, Rindo, I've got a favor to ask. You mind hearing me out? What do you need? I'm caught off guard by his request. I've been here for nearly five years now, and this was the first time Swan act actually asked me for a favor. Well, it's about my granddaughter. Mr. Swan began to talk amid the sound of rain. It's the usual spiel about his granddaughter. Except, he asked me to come five days later. Five days have passed. I was at GPM working at my desk. That's when I heard of Sawan's passing. Oh, did Grandpa know? Alright, back to Katoni's perspective. Alright, happy times, happy music. It's been a week since the incident happened on Amasaki Island in the Tohoku region. With all the ruckus behind me, I'm finally able to get a handle on things. Here's your apple pie! We don't have any other customers, so I added a little extra for you. Oops, <laughs> it's Mmm, I appreciate it. I'm doing my usual routine at the cafe while I try to forget how sleepy I am. 
Canis is my, is my only customer for today. Miser and Ignis are out on a stroll. As for Ill, he locked himself in his room as usual with that new release he got his hands on. I try to hold back a big yawn when I see Canis tilt his head as he's eating? Question mark. The apple pie. Come to think of it, where is Rindo? I have not seen him in a while. Oh, well, it looks like things have been crazy busy for Mr. Rindo. Something about needing to create a, create a report and do damage control. Guess he won't have much time for himself. I got a lot of paperwork. <laughs> got to turn into all this paperwork. The rift that suddenly opened in the sky. The giant arm. The smart toy. Miser used his power to stop it while everyone else tried to stall the deployed forces. There's no way Mr. Rindo could avoid the workload to come once he saw the events unfold in front of him. Mr. Rindo sent me a picture of himself with his work, to which Canis nods at. Oh! I have seen the undead that look more rested than he does! <laughs> he did say his work is nearly finished, so he'll probably be coming back soon. Hmm, I see. Yet. Canis looks at my smartphone, then takes a careful look at my face. Rindo has sent you a selfie? How long have you two been so close? Huh. Oh, well... It just hit me that I casually showed off the selfie Mr. Rindo just sent me. I have to think quick, or Canis is gonna think that Mr. Rindo is the type who sends selfies to anyone and everyone. This is, um... I only got this when we were sharing how things are going and stuff. And sharing? Well, you remember how I ended up in Amasaki Island, right? Mr. Rindo was really worried about me. So... He would ask me how things are going on a daily basis to make sure I'm safe. He was also worried about the power Miser let loose back there, but... I guess I don't need to bring that up now. Hmm, I see. Be careful of non-humans. <clears throat> Mr. Indo reminds me of that often, ever since I met him. Even after seeing how strong everyone is, I'm not going to change how I approach them. If I was in his shoes, I'm sure I'd be worried just the same. So, keeping contact is understandable. I'm supposed to let him know what happened each day, but that's a bit boring, isn't it? I've been sending all kinds of pictures. After seeing pics of the cafe and coffee, I guess Mr. Rindo figured he'd do the same and start sending me pictures too. Haha, <laughs> how endearing! Why don't you send him a selfie back, Katone? Huh? Um, but. <laughs> Ugh! Stop following me, will ya? Damn, go back to the GPM already! Let's get sickness. Huh? It was then I heard yelling from beyond the door. Canis and I look at each other. That's Ignis, isn't it? Without a doubt. I would say that's good timing. We both look towards the door. The bell on the door rings. Hey, I'm back. Give me something to drink, will ya? Oh, and something to eat would be great. Oh, that's why he's yelling. I'd like to have something sweet. It's that quality sugar that keeps this brilliant mind of mine in tip-top shape. I find two unusual customers walking in through the door. Uh, 
Ignis and Mikado? No, it was not Rindo. Seeing Ignis here is hardly a surprise, but Mikado. Oh well, about that. Ugh. I had the luck of meeting the guy. He's been telling me ever since. I could tell immediately Ignis was absolutely disgusted with him. It turns out that they happened to meet each other at the train station and Mikado just followed him here. What a pain. Honestly, the timing was impeccable. I wanted to come here anyway. For what exactly? If it's about Amasaki Island, I already told Mr. Rendo everything I know. Oh, it's not that. It was an interesting case, but... I actually came to see you, Kotone Awaki. Me? Before I knew it, I found Kana standing between me and Mikado. If you are wanting to do your experiments, go and see Ignis. I'm not taking my eyes off of you lest you harm Kotone. Wow, and I thought we were buds. How do you plan on doing that when you don't have any damn eyes? Uh, so what exactly are you here? <laughs> are you your furry in Mikado? I decided to ask before things get worse. Mr. Mikado appears from buying Canis and puts on a wide smile. Well, my girlfriend's birthday is coming up. Huh? Girlfriend? Before I can ask, Mr. Mercado points his finger at me. Geniuses like me live in solitude. As a result, I don't have the luxury of having the female perspective. Hence, I want you, petty girlish someone, to help me choose a gift. Um, they? What? Petty? Someone? Thought how you asked for a favor, Mikado. I've got a few words to say to him. But... Before I tell him off for being rude, I want to ask something. I want to ask something else. Um, so apparently... Uh, you probably, probably could make a save state here. Um, if you pick the wrong answer, you get a dictionary term. But I think I'll just pick the right answer just so I don't disrupt the story. Um, if I really, really want that dictionary term, there is a chapter select, so I can just kind of skim through and, and grab it, like, after, afterwards. Alright, you have a girlfriend? <laughs> Let's ask him that. Mikado, y you have a girlfriend? You've got to be kidding me. This <laughs> can can say nothing. <laughs> Ah, you mean a two-dimensional kind of girl? I heard of that from Ill before. Oh, I get it. It's that waifu thing, right? Rude! I have a real-life girlfriend! Mind you, I'm 29 years old! This is a serious relationship. You're 29 and you can't pick clothes that fit you, dude. Like, come on. Your lab coat's like... Hanging off your hands. What? He has a girlfriend. But that's not all. Mikado is 29 years old. I know what's a secret. Maybe it's Maybelline. He he doesn't look his age. Unbelievable. Hmm, I agree. How sad. It must be exhausting being so normal and not gifted like me. In any case, I don't need the non-human's help. I need the help of a commoner. So please. Uh, well, but... 
I'll see you again in three days from now. Let's say at 2 p.m. I'll meet you in front of the train station. Well then, I'm counting on you, Katone. Wait, what? <laughs> huh? Once he finishes explaining his requests and what he wants from me, Mr. Mikado leaves without giving me a chance to reply. A forced promise. Mr. Mikado comes in like a storm and leaves once the damage is done. All we can do is stand in awe. Three days later. I promised to meet Mr. Mikado today. More, well, more like I was forced to promise to meet with him today. Oh, hi. <laughs> like we agreed, I'm in front of the train station with Ill by my side. Hmm. I don't see any sign of Mikado nearby. Well, I am 20 minutes early. Last night, Ill and I agreed that he should join, so he is with me. So it was forced, and still a promise, but Ignis and Canis were totally against me coming here. So they sent Ill as a, as a chaperone? <laughs> so about that thing I'm going to help Nakata with, you know, finding a gift for his girlfriend. Screw it. I say let it go. It's not worth it. Hell. That wasn't even a promise. It wasn't even a conversation. He just talked at you and left. You cute! Koro seemed to agree with Ignis. Canis is nodding along too. Oh, uh... Sure, it was forced, but it's still a promise, you know. But... I have a bad feeling about this. Who knows what he has in store? Mikado may not look like an ordinary child, or may look like an ordinary child, rather, but let us not forget that he is a member of the GPM. Hmm... It doesn't seem like he has ulterior motives. I don't think he has time to do anything. A member of the GPM. That alone is enough to make all the others suspicious. In particular, Every time I meet Mr. Mikado, he asks for blood samples. Ignis's words come to mind. But he rarely shows any interest in me. I have no interest in humans. He almost lives by that statement, too. And yet, he's asking for my help to find the perfect birthday gift for his girlfriend. Well, he did come to see me to ask for help. And Karia is getting a bit of help from him too, which is why I want to try and help. I think it'll be alright. We're going to be shopping around the train station and in town. I'll reach out if anything happens. What? How about this? One of us will follow you tomorrow as your personal guard. Huh? Before I could say they didn't need to watch over me like bodyguards, a hand rises up within the room. Well then, I'll go. You... go? Even Miser was surprised for ill volunteering instead of giving an open-ended suggestion. Yes, besides guarding her. We'd be going to buy a gift for his girlfriend, right? If so, I believe I am the perfect candidate. The insight I've gained from playing all my, of my Otome games is invaluable. I am almost certain I know more about girls than Katone now. Uh, Elle? You do know I am a girl, right? So, I don't think Hill knows that much about real life girls. <laughs> Here I am. 
We have 10 minutes to go. Got it. But is Mikado really gonna show up? The more I think about it, the more I'm convinced my mind was playing tricks on me. Mr. Mikado with a girlfriend. He's 29 years old. He's thinking of getting married. It can't be. It's too weird. What's weird? Yikes! I snap back to reality to find Mikado standing in front of me. He's wearing his usual attire. <laughs> Dude, he couldn't even take out take off his lab coat. <laughs> hmm? Oh! Did I keep you waiting? I really thought I arrived on time. Oh, uh, not to worry. I got here earlier to avoid being late. I see. That aside, why is the fallen angel here? I mean, it's great. I, I get to see a rare non-human, but having him awkwardly walk between us is a bit ridiculous. Mikado, you're a member of the GPM, so I'm just taking the precaution of protecting her from you. What? Why would you say that out loud? I thought he was being too blunt, but... Oh, is that bothering you? I see then. Well, I'm glad you're here to protect her. Now then, shall we? All in the name of my love. Perfect gift. I'm not leaving without you. He isn't faced at all by what Il said. Instead, Mikado begins walking with a pep in his step, humming in joy. Il and I both look at each other. We have to pick up the pace just to keep up with him. Oh! What a place to go shopping! I can see why you chose this place! Ah, uh, having multiple stores gathered around a busy street ensures competition and versatility, thus increasing revenue. Wonderful! How very practical! Mikado, you don't go shopping very often, do you? Mikado nods in confirmation as he, as he scopes out the shopping area with interested, keen eyes. Indeed! A genius can't spare the time or brain cells. Most of my purchases are done online. So you see, I felt that buying online lacked the personal touch that my love deserves. If I'm buying something that is inherently tangible, I may as well see and buy it for myself. Mikado! Mikado let out a bright smile. He must really treat his girlfriend as someone special. To be honest, I'm still not convinced he actually has a girlfriend, but... He's very serious about coming out here for her. If so, I'll try to do my very best to help him out. Ah, uh, but... With so many shops, this will be difficult to determine which one to go to. Then suddenly... Ella quietly and gracefully moves into position. <laughs> with his sage advice. This is my time to shine. There's a bookstore, movie theater, anime shop, pop star themed cafe. These stores seemingly have anything we can think of, so we are definitely going to find the right gift. He offers advice to Mr. Mikado. Uh, maybe it's just me, but the latter half of his suggestions sounded a bit too niche. Just so you know, if you purchase a magazine at that bookstore, you will receive a limited edition postcard. Oh, that sounds like a great idea. I heard girls love limited things. Uh, Mikado? Mikado? 
I don't think that would make for an appropriate gift for her birthday. Hmm? You think so? Well, maybe I should reconsider then. I turned around to L and gave him a friendly reminder. Um, L? I just want to remind you we're buying something for his girlfriend, not for you. The key word is birthday. Let's keep that in mind. Il stares at me with an, oh, I get it, look on his face. All right, birthday. Well, I have the perfect suggestion then. After all, I've gone through plenty of birthday event scenarios. Really? That's great! You see, the most important detail about a birthday is... Heh. <laughs> Despite being a non-human, Il is trying his best to teach Mikado how to properly celebrate a birthday. Mikado is as curious as ever and Il is confident as usual. Seeing the two of them this giddy walking down the street puts a smile on my face. We went everywhere. We walked from store to store, along the street, but... Oh! Test tubes! They're absolutely beautiful! Um, I suppose, but I doubt your girlfriend would like them. Indeed. Katone is right. How about this CD? It is a special edition that comes with a free ticket for an event. That's what you want, isn't it, Ill? <laughs> this whole choosing a gift thing is turning out to be a chore. That aside, what happened to Ill supposedly knowing all about girls? At this rate, the gift Mikado ends up with is gonna be something an Otome fangirl wants for their collection. I look around myself. When I happen to find a gift that may work, I call to Mikado to come see. Mikado, how about... a ring? It's a ring for the pinky finger, so it isn't too heavy-handed in terms of what rings usually mean. A ring. A splendid idea. It's a common item used in Otome games when trying to raise a girl's affection gauge. Aha! The design would suit her too! Wait! The size looks a bit off. Maybe I can use it as a necklace charm. But it is designed for the finger. Maybe there's something better. No, wait. Hmm. How about that one? It is a dress popular amongst the girls. Oh! How cute! But it looks too big for her. She is rather petite, you know. We look at this and we look at that. We can continue our rounds to the stores in search of the perfect gift. It's afternoon now. I'm sitting by myself on one of the benches along the street. Heh. <laughs> they seem to be getting along well. I chuckle as I look at them wandering around the store in front of me. Il and Mr. Mikado are standing in front of Il's favorite character themed store. We already bought a good amount of things for his girlfriend, so I doubt they choose something from that store. I have to say, I never thought Mikado was the type to be so caring about his girlfriend. All day long, Mikado was running wild trying to find that perfect gift for his girlfriend. To add, Mikado kept complimenting his girlfriend through the whole shopping experience. I mean, it was so blatant that it actually made me blush. But I'd be happy if a special someone made the same effort for me. That's something I don't think I will ever experience myself. Rather, I don't have the time to think about things like that. 
Not a bad excuse, if I say so myself. But one day... I hope a special someone will come my way who would care enough to go through things like this. Oh, who's do this? <laughs> if you want a gift, I have one for you, my dear. Huh? Oh. Wait. Sweet words are accompanied by a can of juice. I surprise surprise I look up to find. Oh. It's it's Mr. Rindo in street clothes. Oh, you didn't want it. Aha. Uh -huh. Let me guess. You wanted something warm to drink. <laughs> uh, Katone. What's with the surprised look on your face? It, it is Mr. Rindo, right? <laughs> Looking too cool for school. I know that voice. It's so obvious. But... I can't be certain it's a, the person I'm thinking of. Who are you? <laughs> what? You're kidding, right? I really didn't know what else to say. <laughs> He's like an imposter. <laughs> you can only wear a suit, Mr. Rindo. That's it. <laughs> I really didn't see that coming. It's me, Rindo. I never expected you to be so the kind of person to get so flustered by me. Mr. Rendo chuckles to himself. I still can't come to terms with how he looks. Like he's from, like he used to be in a boy band or something. Um, uh, but, but Mr. Rendo, you look different. What's going on? What do you mean by that? I have a day off today. I'm just exploring the area, that's all. This so happened I found myself here. What? It's been about a week, right? Huh? Oh, okay, get to see his portrait. He does look kind of cool. He's supposed to be in his 40s though, right? I take the can of juice from Mr. Rendo as he sits next to me with that usual smile of his. I'm sorry, but you look so different when you're not wearing your suit, Mr. Rindo. Different? You could have just said nice, you know. I mean, even cool would have worked. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess it didn't dawn on me. <laughs> At least you reacted as usual. Are you done with all your work? Yeah, finally. To be honest, I was actually heading to Enchante. Guess fate had different, a different plan. I don't really think it's fate. <laughs> what can't flirt with older men like me? Feels like it's been forever since Mr. Rindo teased me like this. So happy that a smile comes to my face. But I try to hide my smile behind the can of juice Mr. Rindo gave me. Heh. <laughs> I'm glad you're doing alright. That selfie you sent worried me. Oh, uh, that. Well, I'm in my 40s. I don't look my best after working late nights anymore. I haven't been to Enchante for a week. So I was getting a bit worried, too. Really? But I've been reporting to you on a daily basis. Well, yes, but there are a lot of things I could miss by not being there in person. What Mr. Rindo says does make sense. So, you're out shopping today? Oh, yes! 
I'm here with Ill and Mr. Mikado, but they're out shopping together now. Are, we, are you sure you should be leaving those two kids out alone together? Even though they're both older than you. They're gonna get lost. What? Mikado? Why is he? No, wait, you said ill, right? Did those two even get along? Well, I think they're doing fine. See, Mr. Mikado is looking for a gift for his girlfriend and... Wait, maybe I'm talking too much. Mr. Mi Mr. Rindo, did you know that Mr. Mikado has a girlfriend? Mikado? Girlfriend? Oh, you knew? I actually only found out recently. I really didn't expect Mikado to be so obsessed with his girlfriend. He keeps talking about how cute she is, or like how special she is to him. Um, Mr. Rindo? Mr. Rindo goes silent. I can see the tension in his expression. He then looks straight at me. Katone, a word of advice. Don't get too involved with what you are talking about. Huh? What do you mean? Uh... <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Alright, so this is a pick his girlfriend, so... He sounds like... Is there some kind of problem with Mikado's girlfriend? Mr. Rindo doesn't say a word. But his silence is almost telling that I'm onto something. Wait, could it be... Mr. Mikado is being used by this girlfriend of his? That's entirely possible. Rather, that's probably it, considering what Mikado is like. Well, even if I lack experience when it comes to love, I wouldn't even be able to tell if someone was trying to use me. Whoa! Isn't that young man there, my dear old friend Rindo? Making young, altering one's appearance to seem younger in age than reality. Never mention such a thing to women, ever. Okay, thanks, game. Huh? What timing for Mikado and Il to return? I quickly look at the two. Instead of seeing Il or Mikado, all I can see is... A crepe? What's wrong with trying to look young? I am a man, you know. And what's with that mountain of crepes? It's a gift for Katone. Ill calmly states, in his hand are crepes. Seriously, a mountain of them. Uh, Ill? I love my crepes, but isn't that a bit too many? Well, I have a dozen on me. I bought them so I can complete the coaster collection that came with them. So that's three per person. I appreciate you adding me so, so naturally into the equation. Hmm. Well, if Rindo isn't gonna have some, then that's four per person. Now, now, Ill. I think Rindo's too old to enjoy the rich cream on these crepes. Come on, I was just getting hungry. I can put away three crepes easily. <laughs> no. Gonna give him indigestion. Mr. Rindo glares back, smiling, as he quickly downs one of the crepes. We all begin eating the crepes, savoring each bite, but... It's a bit different for me. Can't stop thinking about what Mr. Rindo said earlier. Advising me not to get too involved with Mikado's girlfriend, whoever she is. He has his usual bright and friendly smile on his face as he takes a bite out of his crepe. 
Mr. Rindo is really good at hiding his feelings from others and lying to others. Which is why I feel concerned about what he said earlier. Time passes. With Mr. Rindo in tow, we continued with our shopping. Soon, Il heads back to Enchante after saying that he needs to be there so he can sign off on some deliveries. Before I know it, the sky is shimmering with stars. Fantastic! You saved me, Katone! Her birthday's gonna be perfect now! That's good to hear. Thank you so very much! I'll, I'll come see you for anything else! Mr. Mikado lets out a wide smile and quickly turns and runs off with the wrapped gifts in his arm. He looks like some kind of elementary school student from behind. Now alone, Mr. Rindo looks at me. Let me walk you to Enchante. Huh? Oh, it's alright. It's close by. Now, now. Not escorting a girl back is not a good look for a gentleman. And so I head back to Enchante with Mr. Rindo in tow. I let out a sigh as we walk down the street amid the quiet night. Whew! A lot sure happened today. Or rather, all the ruckus from earlier really tired me out. <laughs> High school girl A. Wow, look at them. What a weird bunch hanging out together. Maybe they're like a family? Well, probably not, but they sound, uh, sound like a sore thumb. A cool middle-aged man! What a cute and, <laughs> and a cutie in a white coat! And a prince from another land? What a party! <laughs> Etc. All the girls took notice of us immediately. You have a, a weird, a weird band of boys just hanging out with you. I even overheard them talking about me. Just hearing them trying to figure out why I'm with them wore me out. <laughs> Got a, a reverse harem. Hmm. I always thought I attracted attention because of the non-humans around me, but... Now that I think about it, Mr. Rindo and Mr. Mikado's appearances draw enough attention. In Mr. Mikado's case, his style is... unique, so him being stared at isn't unusual. As for Mr. Rindo, he is pretty tall and has a nice build. I don't get to see him. See, see his outfit <laughs> from a different angle. Not to mention, he is also pretty handsome. It would be easy for someone to mistake him as some celebrity. Only now, I'm starting to notice that he might be pretty popular with the girls. <laughs> Tony. Hmm? Is there a problem? Actually, I know he's good with the girls. He led me a lot more gracefully than any of the other guys the last time we all went out together. Huh. What do I mean by other guys, anyway? Maybe I can ask a bit more. Um, Mr. Rindo? Hmm? What is it? Mr. Rindo, are you popular with the girls? <laughs> I know it's blunt, but I simply had to ask. Oh, where'd that come from? Well, it's just that you sort of stood out from among the crowd today. I explained what's on my mind to Mr. Rindo, which caused him to think. I see. Even though the only... Non-human was ill. We stood out, eh? Heh. <laughs> I heard one of the girls call you cool, too. 
Hearing my curious comments, Mr. Rindo begins to heartily laugh. Hmm. I guess I am sort of popular. I knew it. But since you're presenting this as a question, that must mean that you don't see me in the same light as the others. That's a shame. I guess I'm not that cool after all. Oh, well, uh, that's not what I... I get it. Being surrounded by non-humans diminishes whatever appeal I have as a human. So I guess it can't be helped. Still, he didn't deny his popularity with the girls. Just the thought is making you imagine what Mr. Rindo goes through. Or at least I tried. I guess this shouldn't be surprising to me, but I can't imagine what kind of life you lead, Mr. Rindo. Whoa, whoa. After implying that you don't care much for me, now you want to get to know me. <laughs> You're quite a player, aren't you? What? N not at all. I was just wondering since you're a regular at my cafe. Well, besides me, my suggestion to you is to make more human friends. The guys in Enchante are reliable, but they're non-humans. You need to associate yourself with more normal people to live like a normal person. You know, I think you've been spending a bit too much time with the other side. I bite back at Mr. Rindo's statement. Uh, I'm totally fine. I've been speaking with a lot of people other than non-humans. Speaking... Huh. Humans. The only ones I can recall are Mr. Rindo and Mr. Mikado. Uh... Not unusual to see cafe staff getting friendly with their customers. But normal people rarely come to Enchante. Not in contact with everyone I used to know back at my old job. Not even in contact with my school friends. Um, is it just me or am I in a unique situation that's preventing me from being normal? N no, wait. Um, well... Uh, just yesterday, I spoke with the owner of the grocery store. And, besides me and Mikado... <laughs> Erg. I guess I've only been conversing with non-humans. Now that I think about it, it's never dawned on me because I talk to any customer who comes in. I can understand where he's coming from. I might be desensitized to my unique situation. I know it can be tough to simply go out and make friends. So until then, I guess you can talk to me as a human. Smooth, smooth Rindo. I know I'm just being a busybody, but I'm worried that you being swayed by the non-humans around you. Be wary of the non-humans. I'm sure that's what he wants to say to me. It's something that I've been preached over and over since I met him. But... But, what about you, Mr. Rindo? Huh? You always think about the non-humans every day of your life, Mr. Rindo. You come to Enchante whenever you can find the time for your work. That's right. Reading his emails. I'm convinced that Mr. Rindo is a hard worker. I'm off work now. I always see that. I always see that late into the night, well past sleeping hours. Mr. Rindo even works during weekends and holidays. Of course, most of the work he's doing now is coming from the Amasaki Island incident, but. 
I think Mr. Indo is the one who should be putting more thoughts towards their life. Ha. <sighs> eh. I see what you're implying, and I think you're right. Mind you, I am using my spare time to do what I enjoy in life. For example, I frequent this little cafe with the cute owner behind the counter. Urgh. But that's still part of his work. Not that I can say that to him. Not with that sweet, bright smile on his face. Well, his first priority of visiting is to keep watch on what's going on. But I guess I am a bit happy seeing him at the cafe to pass his time. Whoops. Looks like we're here. Mr. Rindo stops. I look up ahead and see Enchante waiting for me. Well, I better get going. Good night, Katone. Thank you. Good night to you too, Mr. Rindo. And good night is a good thing. I hear Mr. Rindo mumble as he walks away. I watch as his figure vanishes in the night. And with that, I went back home to Enchante. The next day... Cue! I hear Koro quietly snoring, which brings a smile to my face. So, how'd it go, Katone? I tell every single detail to the regulars here as I get the cafe ready. Hmm, well... We did end up buying a gift for Mikado's girlfriend. He looked happy, so I guess it all went well. Indeed. I completed my set of special edition coasters, too. The hell were you there for anyway? <laughs> Still, to think that Mikado has someone that means that much to him is unbelievable, to say the least. Canis reaches out for his cafe latte to take a sip. Hmm, wait. When did Rindo know who this person is since he works with him? Huh. You're right. Well, it's not like we're dying to know, but we may as well ask him the next time. Mr. Rindo's name comes up, which reminds me that I should tell him everything. Tell everyone that I met him, too. Oh! I actually saw Mr. Rindo yesterday. To add, he wasn't wearing a suit at all. He actually looked pretty fashionable. I bet no one's ever seen him wearing anyth anything besides his work clothes. Oh, he was dressed like a young buck, huh? Figures! Figures! I guess everyone views Mr. Rindo in the same light. Well, it is Rindo after all. Il, I didn't say anything. Il looks up and then back down and gazes at his collection of coasters. Um, well, I also asked about Mikado's girlfriend while I was at it. Um, Mr. Rindo? Mr. Rindo goes silent. I can see the tension on his face. His eyes focus in on me. Katone, a word of advice. Don't get too involved with what, with what you are talking about. So, I wasn't able to get any solid information from Mr. Rindo. Don't get involved. 
It almost sounds like you'd become a pawn if you learned too much. Yikes! Well, I doubt that happened, but... He said he was 29 years old. So if he is able to maintain an appearance that is not possible by normal humans, with what Miser just said, may not be off the mark. Huh. You think? Whoa, it's getting shadier by the minute. Uh, the GPM's been shady from the start. Everyone nods in agreement to Ignis's reply. But, but, Miss Rendo's a good person, right? I mean, he did help a lot back at Amasaki Island. Mr. Rendo has his opinions about the non humans. Even so, he's been very supportive of Enchante and everyone here. But I suppose that's because he was friends with my grandpa so long ago. Well, even if Rendo was a good guy, that doesn't mean we can trust that GPM, you know. I doubt they're all the same. Some acted out of line, even when Rendo suggested otherwise. Err. He's right about that. There's no way I'll forget when the GPM forcefully, forcefully tried to buy Enchante. I can only assume Ignis and the others met members from the GPM at some point who are like that person. In that sense, I guess Mr. Rindo is a rarity in their organization. GPM! Uh... <laughs> Government Paranormalism Measures, or GPM. We're the government agency responsible for dealing with the unexplainable phenomena. Our main concerns are supernatural abilities like magic or curses, and also... Non-humans are negatively affect the human world. Government Paranormalism Measures. GPM, for short. The organization Mr. Rindo works for. That's about all I know. All they are supposed to do is place non-humans in custody and research the gate. Well, at least that's what they say. I don't know what they really do beyond that. That just shows I really don't know much about Mr. Rindo. Okay, back to Mr. Rindo's perspective. I'm at the GPM headquarters. Working late. Phew. I let out a sigh after finally finishing my work for the day. With all the reports done, I think I could finally take a breather. If I could report exactly what happened, my work would have been done a lot sooner. But I had to withhold some information so that the regulars in Enchante and Katone don't get into trouble. So I made sure I fixed some of the data before submitting it to upper management. But that sure took a long time. Well, oh dear girl aside, I'm not sure if I needed to cover for Miza as well. Such a busybody. I turn around and look up at the building amid the moonlight night. It's just kind of a bright, bright building for, for a, a business building. It's like it could be like a casino or something. Now that I think about it, I've already spent 20 years of my life working here. I've met a lot of non-humans, but... I'm pretty darn sure I haven't associated with anyone as closely as I have with the people in Enchante. Seriously. A nice bunch for being non-humans. Oh ho! If it isn't Rindo! Finally going home, are you? Mikado, what the... I turn around to a familiar voice. 
I see the doll cradled in Mikado's hand. I hold my breath at its sight. Thanks for working again, so late again. It's pretty dark out there, but are you going to Enchante again? No, I'm heading home. I see. I must say I'm quite envious of you. To see you use your lofty position in order to visit Enchante is just spectacular. Alas, I'd like to get the chance to use work as an excuse to be a patron at Enchante. Aha! Uh -huh. Maybe if I go up the ranks, I should check in with our bigwigs. Isn't that right, Koo? Okay, that was a weird interaction. <laughs> Why did Rindo get quiet? A few days pass since helping Mikado. Okay, we're back to Katani's perspective. I'm here at the GPM's headquarters building. It's Karia's usual medical checkup, and I'm here to accompany him today. I guess it's gonna take another 20 minutes or so before he's done. I look at the time on my smartphone and walk down the hallway in an attempt to pass the time. The GPM really doesn't look any different from any other major corporation. Everyone I walk by looks like any old business person. It doesn't cease to amaze me how huge this place is. Karya said he can go alone, so he went his way. I'm sure I'd be all giddy just coming to a place like this back when I was in middle school. It's not often that I come to the GPM. I may as well check the place out. That said, the majority of this place is off limits to visitors. They get, then again, I'd rather spend my time exploring the GPM to get to know them better rather than just sitting and waiting. Various thoughts come to mind as I gaze at the information board. Oh! Well now, if it isn't our dear Katone! Mikado! Well, hello there! What a coincidence seeing you here! Did you come to see Rindo? No, I am... I explained that I came here with Karia for his medical checkup. Aha! Uh -huh. You mean that ice fairy of yours? I wanted to see him again, but they relieved me of my duties as a researcher. It's just a hunch, but I'm guessing that is because he let Karia escape. That's right! You have to listen to me. It's about my girlfriend's birthday. I'm gonna be giving her the gift today. Huh. It's today? Yes, and... Aha! Uh -huh. Why don't you meet her? I'd like you... I'd like to introduce her since you're here. Huh. Are you sure that's okay? Yes, absolutely! I'm sure she'd be ecstatic. Mikado nods and smiles. I wonder if an outsider like myself should be a part of such a special occasion. But I am a bit curious who this person is. And Mr. Mikado is inviting me to meet her. My curiosity gets the better of me as I nod in reply. I message Karia to let him know, and then follow Mikado down to a different room. Huh. There's no one inside the room. All I see in here are Mikado's research papers and the fox doll that he always carries around with him. Um, Mikado? Is she supposed to be here? I asked out of curiosity. Hmm? She's right here! Oh no... Mikado smiles and lifts the doll he, was ca he carries around. Mikado then takes the gift out of his pocket and begins speaking to the doll. 
Why does this have to get weird? <laughs> Sorry to have kept you waiting, Koo. I brought you a very special gift for your birthday. Huh? He's joking, right? I'm sure his real girlfriend is standing behind me, getting ready to surprise me. Nope, it's it's the doll. I also have a feeling that's not really a doll. I had a hunch since the beginning, but because it looks it looks like a like a fox like a fox spirit like a yokai. But no one is behind me, and no one seems to be joining us after a brief brief pause. Mind you, Katoni here helped me find the perfect gift for you. You know, I really messed up your last birthday when I gave you a gift you didn't want. So, I had her help me to make sure you'd be happy this year. Now, now, let's open it together. I hope you like it. I've never seen Mikado put on a smile this warm before. He takes the trinket out of the box. The gift inside is definitely the item we helped choose for him. A small necklace. See that? The jewel looks really good on you. It took a while to find this. Hmm? You like it? I actually wanted to buy you a ring. But I couldn't find one that fit you. Hmm. But... I guess I can't special order one for you. Let's see what size will fit you. She doesn't have... <laughs> the doll doesn't have hands. What's going on here? Mikado is talking to himself. Actually, he's talking to his doll. And responding as if it was talking back to him. I feel a shiver down... Down my spine as I watch this eerie event unfolding in front of me. Then suddenly... Mr. Mikado places the necklace around Ku's neck. Its eyes... Moved. Uh... What the... Hmm. Ah, that's right. I'm so sorry. It's time to eat. I guess my dear girlfriend is more interested in food than fashion. <laughs> Mikado rolls his sleeves. Wait. I looked at his exposed arm to see when he says feeding time. Countless scars. Here you go, Ku. Mikado presses his arm in front of Ku like an offering. Then it happens. Ku quickly snaps forward and bites onto Mikado's arm. Its fangs dig deep into his flesh. Huh, what? What's going on? I slowly take a step back. Suddenly, a hand grabs my shoulder. Oh, that's why Rindo said not to get involved. M Mr. Rindo! I look up to see his face twisted in agony. It was as if he's seen this too many times before. His eyes are dull and lifeless. Mikado, do you mind if I borrow Katone? I need to speak with her for a second. Hmm? Ah, oh, why, of course. I was planning on spending this special day with Ku anyway. Oh, but... Maybe we could share this day and have a double date. Mikado let out a bright smile as Ku keeps his fangs sunken into his arm. He looks so happy. And he really seems to believe it. How about it? Why don't we all go out together? It'll be the best date we've ever been on! Heh. <laughs> Maybe next time. Now let's go. 
Mr. Rindo pulls me towards him as I was still in shock. And without another word, we both leave the room and the happy couple behind. The air feels a lot cooler now. It's probably coming from the cold sweat on my hands. What did I see back there? I asked Mr. Rindo if he knows what's going on since I'm utterly confused. What was that about? Seriously! What was that? Why was Mikado? But Mr. Rindo doesn't say anything. He quietly buys two coffees from the vending machine and hands me one of them. He leans against the wall and takes a sip of his canned coffee. He doesn't seem to be enjoying his coffee like he usually does at Enchante. He's trying to choke it down the best he can. In fact, he's drinking his coffee as if he's trying to wash out a bad taste. His expression is so unlike him. He looks defeated, ashamed of accepting fate. I was hoping you wouldn't have found out. He downs his coffee and begins to mumble. What you saw back there, that is Mikado's girlfriend. It used to be a human, now a type 2 Lord Hubert Ed. My younger sister. Wait, is that- wait, is that the bomb they're gonna drop it on? <laughs> okay! They just dropped the bomb. At the very end of the chapter. Alright. Okay, I wasn't- I wasn't expecting that. That- that got weird. That went from- that went from fun to lighthearted, and lighthearted to really weird, real fast. Alright, anyway. Have us have some time to collect our thoughts here. Um, I hope you guys had a fun time with this. And we'll see you in the next episode for chapter two. Alright, bye bye.